In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and take a look at polynomial functions. Now, we've looked at quadratic functions. We've looked at cubic functions. So notice with cubic and quadratic, our exponents are always positive whole numbers. And we might have one or more terms added together. And that's really what a polynomial is. All the exponents on your variables are positive whole numbers. So no fractional exponents, no negative exponents because that means we would have either variables in the bottom or variables in a root, and that, those are not polynomials. Now, your degree would be the highest exponent that would show up on any of these. And your leading coefficient is the number that's in front of the term with the highest power. So let's take a look down here at these. Now. Is this first one here a polynomial of one variable according to our definition? Well, we have one or more terms added together. We have exponents of a 3, a 5, and a 1. Well, they're all positive whole numbers, so that's fine. So yes, it is a polynomial. Our degree would be the highest exponent that shows up, so that's 5. Our leading coefficient is the number in front of that term. Well, here's our term with our degree on it. The number in front of that is this negative 4. So that would be our leading coefficient. Leading coefficient is not always the first number that shows up because it may not be written in standard form. Now, this next one is also a polynomial because we have set one or more terms added together. All of our exponents are positive whole numbers, and it's written in standard form where the highest power is first, and so on. Now, our degree then would be the highest power, which is 3. Our leading coefficient would be the number in front of that term, which is 5. This one over here does have all positive numbers as exponents, but it's not a polynomial of one variable because we have more than one variable being used. So we're not going to consider our degree or leading coefficient here. So here we have a situation where the total number of hexagons in a honeycomb can be modeled by this function of f of r equaling 3r squared minus 3r plus 1, where r is the number of rings. So we want to figure out the total number of hexagons for a honeycomb with 20 rings. Well, 20 rings, and it said r is rings, we need to take 20 and plug it in here for r. So we're going to go f of r, which we are plugging in 20 for r. So that means we got to take 20 and plug it in for all these r's over here. And now all we have to do is work that out. Wow, my exponent's really off there. Sorry about that. That exponent should be moved over on the 20. There we go. That's how many hexagons we have in our honeycomb. So, here we also have a second function. This one is p. p is the name of our function. Remember, x is your input, and this is the rule. In this case, we've got to take whatever we put in for x, raise it to the fourth power, and then double it, minus our input cubed, plus 3 times our input. Well, here we have function p, and we want to figure out what we get when we plug in 1. So, we're going to go up here and plug in 1 for all of our x's. So if we do that, we get this here, then we work that out, and we end up getting 4. Here, we need to go ahead and go to our function p and plug in 2. So we plug in 2 here, plug in 2 here, plug in 2 here, and then all we have to do is just work that out, either in our head or with our calculator. Here, this says we need to go to function p and plug in triangle. So i got to put a triangle here. Put a triangle here and a triangle here. So basically, whatever is in the parentheses after my p is what I have to plug in for all my variables. So I get this. In this case here, I'm not able to go ahead and simplify anything because I don't have like terms. Over here, I could simplify it because it was just nice normal numbers. Down here, I need to go to function p and plug in y for all my variables. So just like what I had over here. I'm going to have 
2 times y to the 4th minus y cubed plus 3 times y because y is my input. Down here, it says I need to go to function p and I need to replace all my inputs with an a cubed. So I'm going to put a cubed for each one of these inputs here. Well, when I do that, I get this. In this case, I could simplify a little bit because I have an exponent raised to an exponent and an exponent raised to an exponent. So re remembering your exponents rules, you have to go ahead and multiply your exponents. And we would get this. This would be our answer. We have no like terms, so we can't combine anything together. And we're not actually going to pull anything out. We're going to just leave it like this. We're going to just have our answer simplified. And remember, simplify means combining all like terms and no parentheses. Now, we want to look at end behavior. End behavior is what happens to your function as you go far to the right or far to the left. So that means, is your function as you go far to the right going up or going down? Well, if it's going up forever, it'd be going towards positive infinity. Or if you were going to the right and it was going down forever, well, that would be negative infinity, and we would write it like this. Now, we need to take a look at these functions and decide what happens as you go far to the right and far to the left, if it goes up or goes down. And we're going to look at our degree. Now, your degree kind of tells you your basic shape. If your degree is even and your leading coefficient's positive, on the far left, it's going to be going up. On the far right, it's going to be going up. It could be just like a basic parabola if it was a quadratic function. Or it could still have the same end shape as a parabola, but in the middle, be doing a couple of jogs like this. Now, how many jogs it does up and down depends on your degree. Typically, a higher power degree is going to have a few more jogs in the middle. Now, if it's even and negative, basically it takes this graph and flips it upside down. So as you go far to the right, it goes down forever. As you go far to the left, it goes down forever. If it's an odd degree, and we were, we've looked at some cubics before, but we're going to continue to look at cubics. Now, an odd degree, this would be a cubic function here. As you go far to the right, it's going to go up. As you go far to the left, it's going to go down. If it's an odd degree and it's a negative, it's basically going to take this graph and flip it upside down. So as you go far to the right, it's going to go down forever. As you go far to the left, it's going to go up forever. Now, if it's an odd degree that's higher than, say, 3, and these happen to be cubic functions of degree 3. It's probably going to have a couple more bumps in the middle, but that's really the only difference. Your overall shape going up to the right and going down to the left, or going down to the right and up to the left, is still going to be the same. So, for each one of these graphs, we want to determine our end behavior. We want to determine if it's even or odd. We want to determine if our leading coefficient is positive or negative, and then determine the number of zeros. So the first bullet is going to be our blue work down here, our red bullet, second bullet, the red is going to be our red answer, and so on. So as we look here, when you're looking at end behavior, you're going to write it always out like this here. All this part's always going to be the same. So this says as x goes towards positive infinity, in other words, as x gets really, really big, so as x gets really, really big, as you go far to the right, does your function go up or go down? And that's what this is saying. Does your function go up or go down? In this case, as you go far to the right, you see that you go down. So we're going to say our function goes towards negative infinity. This is saying as you go far to the left. As x gets to be a big negative number, well, that's going way over this way. Does your function go up or go down? In this case, her function goes down. So our end behavior would be written like this. So our degree, our degree in this case is going to be even because it does the same thing on both sides. If it goes up on both sides or down on both sides, you know it's an even degree. Odds, 
one goes up, one goes down. So we would know on this one here that it's going to be odd. This one over here, you go up on both sides, so you know it's going to be even. Now, since we're going down on both sides of this even function, we know that we are going to be negative. And then we also want to know how many real zeros. So how many times does it cross the x-axis? Well, in this case, it doesn't, so we don't have any real zeros. When we look at the real zeros over here, it crosses one, two, three times. So we're going to have three real zeros. Over here, we cross once, twice, three times. So we're going to cross three. We're going to have three real zeros. So looking at our end behavior, this means as you go far to the right, does your function go up or go down? In this case, as you go far to the right, we go up, so it's going to approach positive infinity. This means as you go far to the left, does your function go up or go down? As you go far to the left, we go down, so it's going to be negative infinity. Now, that matches with what we had over here, with this right here, letting us know that we're going to have a positive leading coefficient. So we have a positive leading coefficient. So try to finish this one here on your own. So as you go far to the right, our function goes up. As you go far to the left, our function goes down. And since we're going up on both sides, it's a positive.